Come on, saints, this morning let's begin with a song of worship, a song of praise unto our God before we get into this week's message. Hallelujah. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I have searched through all eternity, Lord, and cry, there is none, there is none, there is none like you. Lord, I can search for all the turn of the Lord, and find there is none, there is none, there is none like Hallelujah. We're so blessed that you tuned in with us, saints. Today we have a message that I'd like to share with you called Your Thinking Directs Your Direction. Thinking directs your direction or determines your direction. And we're going to be looking at and talking about scripture today. I believe that the Apostle Paul spoke about to the Philippian church where he says, think about things that are lovely, that are true, that are excellent that are worthy of praise and if there be any other thing think about these things so we want to focus on the things that this writer talked about because these things will determine your direction your direction in your feelings your emotional life your mental life your spiritual life your intellectual life and even your physical life we want to be able to Allow our thinking to be likened to a steering wheel of an automobile. Whichever way you turn the steering wheel is the direction the vehicle travels. And so if we want our life to go on a certain path, if we're, if we're aiming at a certain goal or mark, we need to make sure our thinking is aligned with the direction that we want to go. Hallelujah. And so I want you to think about that and think about the direction that you want your life to go. If you have a certain set of financial goals and you want to get there, then you need to align your thinking, your attitude, your actions, your behavior that will point you in that direction. If it's relationships, then you need to make sure that you direct your thinking into the type of relationship you want to have the kind that you're prepared to contribute to and then direct your thinking in that direction. And sometimes we may have to make course corrections. We may have to swerve and change lanes and adjust our direction, but your thinking will help to determine where you will end up, saints of God. For as a person thinketh in their heart, so are they. So if you're feeling ill this morning, uh, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, I pray that you start thinking about being made whole. <clears throat> Think about healing. Think about fullness. If you're in lack, think about prosperity. Think about fullness. Think about overflowing. If you're lost spiritually, think about salvation. Think about deliverance. Think about being set free. These are things that direct us in the outcome of our lives. And this is why it's very important that we embrace this message on this day because thinking 
controls a lot of what happens in our lives. Thinking controls a lot of what happens around our lives. And so, again, if there are certain things that you want to see happen, manifest, or become reality in your life, start thinking about it. Start meditating on it. Some people may say visualize it. Or even in, 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 in some cases, which I believe is the most uh, excellent way, is to pray that God gives you his vision for your life. For God wants to fulfill his vision over your vision. Your vision may not be in alignment with the vision that God has for you. For God knew you before you were in your mother's womb and he designed you with a divine purpose to be in the earth, to survive the birth, and to survive the number of days, months, weeks, and years that you've lived thus far. There's a reason for you being here. Your life has meaning. Your life has purpose. And so, regardless of what your background may be, or where you've come from, the uh, in our thinking today, focusing on what the Apostle Paul says to the early believers in the church, think about things that are lovely, think about things that are worthy, think about things that are excellent, and if there be any other thing, think about these things. So what have your thinking been over the last 24 hours? I want you to do a little self-inventory. What have been some of the thoughts that you've had over the last 24 hours? Some of the thoughts may have been positive. Some of the thoughts may have been thoughts of happiness and joy. Some other thoughts may have been of worry and anxiety or anxious about different situations and circumstances in your life. It may have been about a loved one. And keeping those thoughts before you now, how can you think about these things and think about a excellent, a praiseworthy, and a lovely outcome to those thoughts that you had? If they were not already lovely and excellent and praiseworthy, how can you now think about those things in light of what we're talking about today? I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon each and every one of you as you take inventory of your thoughts <clears throat> and as you meditate upon the lovely, the excellent, and the praiseworthy outcome that you'd like to see manifest in your life, that, that God will give you uh, divine uh, insight, give you strength, give you encouragement, and give you hope to overflowing even right now. Think, as the apostle says to the early church, think about things that are lovely, that are excellent, that are praiseworthy. And if they are praiseworthy, if the outcome is praiseworthy, go ahead and give God praise right now. For you are great, God, and you're greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We can declare as our worship song this morning was, there is no one else like you, God. And so we want to right now begin to shift the atmosphere in our thinking. And we want to believe that as we begin to turn our thinking toward the outcome that we are desiring, that we'll begin to see the manifestation of God's glory revealed to us. The scripture reference I want to give you to meditate on is Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 through 9. Following this broadcast or during the broadcast, you, you know, that's going to be the, the foundational um, framework that I want to give each of you today to know that your thinking determines your direction. And it almost determines the outcome to a certain degree, thanks to God. So what outcome do you want to see come out of the thoughts that you had? If you're in fear of 
failure, fear of life, fear of sickness? What is the outcome you want to see come out of those thoughts? Is it to be permanently in a state of lack? Is it to be permanently sick or feeling ill? Is it to permanently be in a place of being alone? Or do you want to see yourself in good, healthy, whole relationships? Do you want to see your body made whole, healed? Do you want to see your material and financial life come to a place of surplus? Hallelujah. That's, that's lovely thoughts, saints. Those are excellent thoughts. Those are praiseworthy thoughts. Hallelujah. So we ought to give God praise today because our thinking determines our direction. So today I pray that someone is making a detour from fear, making a detour from lack, making a detour from, from illness, and, 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 take, and getting off the exit because your thinking is now no longer focused in that direction. Your thinking is now focused on a different direction. And God says the next exit is the exit to wholeness, to peace, to prosperity, to healing in your life. So take the next exit in your thinking. No longer travel the direction that you've been going. Do not continue to allow your thinking to go in that direction. Take a different direction in your thinking. Hallelujah. And I believe your outcomes will be different than what you may have previously been thinking about in the name of Jesus. I'll read the scripture before we close here. Philippians 4 and 8, King James Version says, Finally, brethren, whatever thing, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you even now. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit coming upon those under the sound and hearing of my voice. I thank you even now for sending the Holy Spirit inside of people's consciousness, inside of their subconsciousness, inside of their heart, inside of their mind to direct their thinking in a new direction. And Father, I pray that you will manifest the power of your word as they make this altering in their thinking, God. I thank you for things that are true, that are honest. I thank you for things that are just. I thank you for things that are pure and lovely. I thank you for things that are excellent and of good report in their lives. I thank you for all the good, positive, praiseworthy things that you're imparting into them even now. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for causing our thinking to change our direction. Amen. You've been listening to Seed Time and Harvest with Bishop Lyndon Hutcherson of Amazing Grace Ministries. We were blessed that you tuned in to today's message and look forward to connecting with you in person or on future podcasts. Feel free to reach out to us for more information about our ministries by visiting our website, Amazing Grace Ministries, at www.agministries.net.